In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the RAD Grid View's ability to display hierarchical data. Here I have opened the Quick Start Framework, and I'm open to the hierarchy example included for the RAD Grid View. As you can see, I have uh, some employee information in my RAD Grid. Here's one of my employees, and down below that employee, I actually have another table with information about the products that that employee has sold. And this is the hierarchical grid view in its most simplest form. And as you can see also, just simply using the scroll bar to the right, I can scroll down through all items and it's using the new smooth scrolling feature included with the Q3 release of the RAD grid view. And as I click on uh, various employees, it'll expand the hierarchy grid and I can see the different information for each employee. So let's take a look at the different ways we can implement a hierarchical grid view. I'm going to hop on over to Visual Studio so we can take a look at that. There are basically three different ways you can generate a hierarchical grid view. The first way I'm going to show you how to do it is by automatically generating it based on the relationships in your data set. So as you can see here, I have opened my music collection data set. And this is based off of tables inside of my music collection database. As you can see, I have an artist table that has many albums, and the albums have many songs. So let's take a look at how we can automatically generate our hierarchy based on this data set. On the form, I've actually just placed a rad grid view, and that's all I've done there. The real action is taking place in the code behind for this form. Here in the code behind, at the very top, I've just simply declared the music collection data set and the three table adapters associated with that data set. In the form load event, I've filled up those adapters with the data from the database. And what you want to pay attention to here is that I've actually set the auto generate hierarchy property on the rad grid view to be true. And in doing so, I've told the rad grid view to generate the hierarchy based on the relationships and items inside of the data set. And I also need to assign the actual music collection data set as the data source on the rad grid view. And finally, I simply specify the data member to be the top level table. And in this case, it's the artist's table. So let's take a look at this application in action and see what the data looks like. Here's the application. And as you can see, I'm at my current top level, which is all of the different artists. And if I click on an artist and expand it, you can see that here are all of the different albums for that particular artist. And I can also drive down even more into the hierarchy and see all of the songs that are on that particular album. And I can do this for all of the artists contained inside of this hierarchical grid view, and all of this has been automatically generated for me. I really didn't have to do very much to get this. So let's take a look at the second way that we can generate a hierarchical grid view. I'm going to switch over to a different Visual Studio project that I've created. In this project, I'm going to show you how you can manually create the hierarchy used in the RAD grid view. As you can see, I've created a similar project to the previous one that I showed you, which is basically just a form, and on that form I've placed a rad grid view. Down here at the bottom, I've created a music collection data set, which is based on the actual database that we used in the previous project as well. And I've also created table adapters for each of the different tables inside of that data set, and I've created binding sources specific to those table adapters as well. And if we look at the code behind, I've actually populated all of those different table adapters in the code behind as well. So let's jump back over here to the designer and see what I did to manually create the hierarchy. To do that, the first thing I did was over here inside of the smart tag, I've specified the top level data source for my entire hierarchy to be the artist's binding source. The next thing I did was to create the child grid view that's going to display the album's information specific to each of these artists. So let's take a look at that now. Here in the properties window, if I scroll down to the master grid view template and expand that and scroll down a little bit more and in the child grid view templates collection, I've actually created another grid view template. And to this grid view template, I've specified the data source to be the album's binding source because this is what I want to see for each of the different artists. And that's all I've done here. The next step I took was to create a new relationship. And I did that by accessing the relations property, which is on the rad grid view. And if I click this and open up the collection editor, you can see that I've created a new relation. 
and I've specified the parent template for this relation to be the master grid view template, which is the top level template you see right here. And the child template I've specified as the new one that I had previously created, grid view template one, which is the template displaying the album's information. And I've also specified a column name on which to define the relationship. And here under parent column names, if I open up this collection editor, you can see that I've defined artist ID as the column on which to base this relationship. And inside of the child column names, I've also specified artist ID because artist ID is the same name between both of these different tables. So let's take a look at this application in action and see what it looks like. So as you can see, I have my list of all of my artists, and if I click on one of the plus buttons, it expands the hierarchy, and I can see all of those albums specific to a particular artist. And the one thing you should notice here is that I actually don't have access to all of the songs on each of these albums right now. And this is because I haven't defined that hierarchy grid yet. I need to go add that, and I'm going to show you how to add that now. So I'm going to close this out and jump back over to Visual Studio. And the first thing I'm going to need to do to add that new relationship is to create the new child grid view template for songs. So to do that, under the master grid view template property, once again, I'm going to scroll down to child grid view templates and open up that collection. And the songs hierarchy grid view is actually going to be a child grid view of the albums grid view template. So I'm going to need to select the grid view template for albums. I'm going to scroll down to child grid view templates for this particular albums template. I'm going to open up that collection and add a new template here. And I'm going to specify the data source to be the songs binding source. And I'll go ahead and click OK and click OK again. And now I need to define the relationship between these two tables. So I'm going to scroll down once again to the relations property on the rad grid view. And I'll open up the collection editor for that. And in here, I'm just going to click Add, so I can add a new relationship. And I'm going to specify the parent template to be grid view template 1. And the child template is going to be grid view template 2. And for the column on which to define this relationship, I'm going to just go ahead and click this to open up the collection editor for that. And I'll click Add. And I'm going to specify the column name to be album ID. So I'll click OK for that. And I'm going to specify that on the child column as well. So here I'll just open that up and press album ID. I'll click OK and OK again. I'm going to go ahead and save it and let's take a look at what this looks like when I run it. So as you can see I have my list of artists once again and if I click one of those artists and open it up I have the different albums associated with that particular artist and now I can expand the hierarchy even further and I can see all of the songs specific to a particular album. And that's basically how you manually set up the hierarchy to be generated in your grid view. That's pretty easy, isn't it? So let's take a look at the third way we can generate a hierarchy. And this is actually going to be a hierarchy with a single item that contains two separate one-to-many relationships. So I'm going to hop on over to a third project that I've made. And here in this project, I am actually using a, a different database, and this is the context database. So here I have a top-level contact, and it basically contains a first name and a last name of a particular person. And this contact actually has many email addresses, and it can also have many phone numbers. So how do we display a relationship like this in a rad grid view? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to switch over here to the designer. And in the designer, what I've actually done is very similar to what I've done in the previous two projects. Down below, I've simply created the data set, the table adapters associated with that data set, and I have binding sources specific to each of those table adapters. Inside of the code behind, I've done the same exact thing. I've filled up those table adapters with all of the data from the database. So switching back over to the designer once again, let's take a look at what I've done here. So in the smart tag, I've set the top level data source to be the contacts binding source. And here underneath the properties for that red grid view, under master grid view template, let's take a look at that. And under child grid view templates, I'm going to open up this collection. 
I've actually created two different child templates. The first is bound to the email address's binding source, and the second is bound to the phone number's binding source. And these two grid view templates are actually going to show up as tabs underneath the top level grid view. Let's look at the relations property as well to see how those are defined. So I'm going to open up that collection editor, and here I have the relationship defined for, for email addresses. So I've simply specified the master grid view as the parent template, and the child template is the grid view template 3, which basically shows all of the email addresses. And for the relationship column, I've specified contact ID. And for that parent relationship, I've also specified contact ID. And for the other relationship that I've defined for phone numbers, I've specified the master grid view template, once again as the parent template, and the child template is grid view template 2. And for the parent column name, I've specified contact ID. And once again, for the child column, I've also specified contact ID. So let's take a look at this in action and see what it looks like. So as you can see, I have a list of some different contacts that have been stored in my database. And if I expand one of those, you can actually see now that there are tabs because this is actually a one-to-many relationship for email addresses and the contact also has a one-to-many relationship for phone numbers so I need to display both of these underneath that top level grid view so here are my email addresses and if I click the phone numbers tab you can see different phone numbers assigned to this particular contact as well and if I click on any of the other contacts, they also have their email addresses and phone numbers information laid out in a very similar way. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up the hierarchy to work with one-to-many relationships and tab child views. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the various hierarchy generation features included with the RadGrid view. Thanks for watching.